My guest at this time is a former NXT superstar and Lucha Underground wrestler. She can now be seen in the movie Seized. It's Carly Perez. Carly, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you for having me. No problem, Carly. Well, yeah, let's dive on into it here. Uh, this movie is fast-paced. It's a lot of action, a lot of scary individuals. Uh, <laughs> how did you get involved in this movie Seized? Um, I was casted in the film uh, last year. Um, it was a, actually a referral. The, one of the producers uh, was familiar with my acting and work, and uh, they thought that would be a great fit. Uh, playing Mario Van Peebles' uh, right-hand man and wife in the, in this film, so. Nice, nice. And and so, like, you know, very, you know, you, this is a, this is a real, this is an awesome movie, right? This is a real deal. Thank you. You're a real yes. actress. A lot of poor wrestlers, it's hard for them to make that leap. Was, was acting always something you wanted to do even when you were with WWE and in pro wrestling? Or is this something that came after all of the pro wrestling stuff that you did? Um, so one of the main reasons I left WWE was just to pursue uh, careers outside of it. Um, you know, they, they do tend to have a control over a lot of what you do. So it was one of the main uh, reasons that I asked for my release with that company. Um, but I did fall in love with entertainment and um, being in front of the camera and the audience, uh, I learned a lot from my mentor, Dusty Rhodes, you know, before he passed, he was one of my main coaches in uh, FCW when I was with WWE and going through the promo classes and the acting classes and developing characters. That's how I really fell in love with um, this side of the business. Uh, as much as I love the wrestling business, but I, I wanted to just keep growing and uh, sticking with it, it, you are correct. It is difficult to transition the, um, from one to another because people can box you into certain roles and things like that. And then going on to Lucha, they had it open for me. Um, I was lucky enough to develop and make a character that, um, you know, the fans really enjoyed. And to me, I was able to act and provide a Katrina character and really show my talent on that side of the things and not just in the ring. Yeah. So it's something I stuck with. Um, and I'm here in Los Angeles and I'm doing it and um, not just on in front of the camera, but I'm now currently executive producing three projects behind the camera as well. So um, we're, we're going. <laughs> and during wow. the pandemic, I was able to get a lot done. So I was, about, I was about to say, you've got three projects that you're producing during a pandemic. Like how, how, yeah. di how difficult is that? I would imagine it sounds like you would have probably been doing even more had none of this. It stuff was, on, you right? want to know the, the only, and I hate to say plus side, but the plus side during that time here in the entertainment world, you know, when you're making films and television, you, obviously we couldn't be acting in them during the time, but our writers and our producers are at home. So you can get scripts written and go through these ideas and um, characters and scenes and you can get everything set. You can get a pilot done. Uh, I got two scripts done with uh, a couple of the writers that I have on board with these projects during that time. So we're about to go take it out now to the networks in about two weeks now that the networks are starting to buy up again projects. So during that period, I just was like, well, instead of just sitting around, which, you know, take, taking this long vacation, let's try to get as much done as possible. So when things open back up, at least I feel like I accomplished something. Wow. Uh, okay. A couple questions just to kind of touch on a few of the things you said. First of all, Dusty Rhodes, your mentor, obviously a lot of people mm -hmm. love Dusty Rhodes. Uh, what was it like to sit under the learning tree of Dusty? And are there any kind of uh, stories or anecdotes you'd like to share with the listeners about there? Uh, um, Dusty uh, would, you know, um, my favorite time in wrestling and in FCW was our promo days. And Dusty was head of uh, talent at that time in FCW and helping develop characters and helping talent find who they were and what they can bring to the wrestling world. So he really, really pushed me and he's the one that told me I had this untapped talent when it came to developing characters and cutting promos. And I really wasn't sure of myself at the time. Yeah. And Dusty would always tell me, fake it till you make it. And he literally would push me to 
be eventually become comfortable to what I was doing and performing and become confident in the characters I was portraying. Um, so he really, really had a lot to do with where I'm at now in my career and life. Um, even walking away from that business at the time, eventually going into Lucha, yeah. you know, but he had a lot to do with that. So wow. um, I'm, I'm forever thankful to him. His picture hangs in my car. So he, he's there with me during this new, you know, another journey, so to say. Well, I read online that you, uh, and this may be wrong. I don't know if you tell me right, but it said that you had been taking like three years worth of acting classes while with WWE. Were you? Yeah. Taking, so you were doing all this dusty stuff and then also getting act. Is that something common in the WWE where talent goes out and gets these acting classes outside of? No, okay. I, I didn't find it very common. Um, and, and because look, it's a lot. We're on, we're, it's a lot of work. You know, like when you're in uh, when you're in that business, you know, you're giving your life to that business. So there's really and it's looked down upon to do other things when you're in the business. You're supposed to live, breathe, eat, sleep that business. So but I wanted to expand and I felt what was lacking in the business and what and what still is lacking in the business was the the characters weren't there anymore people were so busy trying to do everything inside the ring and get all these moves and all this stuff in crammed in yeah but you don't get a chance to fall in love with their character and make them actually feel and then they were switching people out so much that all of a sudden a new character new week new gimmick and it's like you don't you're not giving anybody a chance to actually dive into something and that's what Lucha gave me, a chance to dive into a character. And I, di I didn't get that in WWE. And all those classes helped me um, figure that out and pull back those layers. So, huh. you know, I have all the respect in the world for the performers. I just happened to learn how to wrestle, but I always found myself as a, a character uh, for the wrestling business, not so much a wrestler. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it's really interesting to me that with as far as like the performance center, the training has come, because I mean, you were there, FCW, you were part of the like game show years of NXT, yeah. you know, the wackiest of wacky years. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really surprising to me as far as they've come that like, I don't think they still offer like traditional acting classes. I mean, again, it's like you get promo classes, you get weight. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's something that they would be wise to maybe include into their program? Is these I definitely of, think you know? that. Yeah. yeah, I definitely think that. I think that uh, um, we're it's a it's a theater. It's a very physical theater. It's a performance. You know, we're on stage, and you you would have those type of classes provided to you on any other sort of theater performing on stage. So um, I do feel like it's a it's a whole other side that's important that I don't think enough people dive into or they should offer it. You know, they should yeah. provide it. <laughs> they're, for actors. The they're, they're actors on TV. You're acting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you would yep. think you want yeah. acting classes, you know? Yep. You're acting. So it's, it's important to, to have it from both sides, you know, so in, in the ring and outside. And, and with you, you know, uh, Carly, having, you know, moved into the, the side of it where you're doing the, you're producing all these projects and stuff, you know, you have, you have the ability to step back and look at the wrestling business. Do you think that WWE, AEW performers, should they be SAG? Should they be treated the same way that you get to be treated on different movie sets and things like that? That's a good question, because if they were, they should be SAG. Um, you know, but unfortunately, we're in that weird place with the wrestling business, and it's not union. Yeah. So, you know, th while they're doing all this work and performing, they're not protected by a union. They're not getting the pay. They're not getting the insurance. You know, they're not getting the time um, and the coverage that they should be getting that you get being SAG and union, mm -hmm. you know, and wrestling will never do that because that's gonna, that would cost a lot of money, you know, so that will cost a lot of money to protect the talent like that. Do I think they should? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, they absolutely should. But, you know, Vince has been getting away from, from that for quite a while now. <laughs> yeah, well, so. yeah. Well, one of the big stories, you know, we broke a lot of news here in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know how closely you still keep up with the business, but like, you know, 
WWE coming in and trying to take over these third party platforms, Twitch, Cameo, all this stuff. Right. The performers. Oh, right I, yeah, I did. I did see that from from the talent using it. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it was interesting to hear me you say earlier when we were talking that one of the reasons you left is because you wanted to be able to pursue these kind of outside entities, and you didn't mm-hmm. think WWE would allow you to do that. Am I getting that kind of right? Correct? Well, okay. I, I'm sure they if they pick and choose who they want to pursue certain things, right? Okay. But then they get a piece of it, and that piece of it is, you know, large. So if you're doing the work and you're putting in the time and you're doing the acting classes or you're out there hustling other things for yourself, why should you get a piece of that? You know, um, that and that's kind of there has to be some kind of ground and understanding. And so much so many of the talent, um, I, I get it. They want to ex- they want to grow and expand as much as possible, you know, right. and that makes total sense. You know, they, they're in front of. Um, you know, millions of people already, and they can expand the brands. And of course, like Dwayne is one of the largest we can think of, right? Sure. Of a of brand expanding from wrestling into Hollywood, right? So why wouldn't you want to do that? But during that period of time, they look at him, and that's inspirational. Like if he can do it, well, then I can expand this brand. But now they they WWE has that they have that control on who gets to and who doesn't and when and why and where. And I don't, they do it. They do it because they can, they don't do it. I don't think they do it for any other reason. Just the fact that they can do it Sure. and you're, and you're not going to say no. And the people who do say no, like myself end up, you know, that's looked down upon. So the fact that you can go and expand and something else, they don't want people knowing that because that, that, that's, that's scary. That's nervous to them, you know? Sure. So they don't want the talent knowing that, wow, people have left and went and did other things and expanded on it. That's not, that's not the kind of image they want to push. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, by the way, you, you just called him Dwayne. Are you guys like friends? Like, I don't know if you hang I know out. Dwayne. We're not, I mean, I'm, I have all the respect in the world for okay. Dwayne. It's amazing what he's done. Um, I've, met him numerous times when I was in WWE and outside of WWE. And, you know, I think it's great what he, he's obviously a massive superstar, especially in the action world. A lot of the things that I wanted to, the, the projects that I have coming out, um, I'm producing a project uh, right now based on the Miami River Cops, which was one of the largest cop scandals of our time. And it was in the 80s. Okay. Uh, I own the life rights to it, and we have the director of Narcos attached to it. Oh, so I love Narcos. That shows awesome. a lot of the projects I'm pushing and I'm producing now are on the drama, real life side. So while Dwayne, obviously, I, I don't plan on trying to catch up to Dwayne, but he's heavily in the action side. I really want to start pushing drama, like those gritty, dark, cool stories, real life stories. Um, I'm producing now the FUBU, the FUBU scripted story with Damon John oh, yeah, uh, sure, from sure. Shark Tank. Yeah. So like, I really like those inspirational, cool stories that bring, um, people and, you know, inspiration and motivation in different ways. Uh, but once again, like I said, all the respect in the world to Dwayne and what he's doing on the action side. I just want to push the other, the other end. All right. Well, lastly here, and, and we'll, we'll wrap up. I want to have some more questions here about C's that we can talk more about, but you bring yep. up Lucha Underground like several times this interview, right? I know we've talked you know, more about like the NXT stuff, but you know, what, how different was it for you at over Lucha Underground? I mean, it sounds like you were much happier over there. Um, performing. Way happier. You know, like I miss my, my friends, you know, the family I grew up with in, in WWE, but um, eventually we became a family at Lucha and it was, um, I think, Look, no one can say the content's better. It was just better. The, everything was better. And there's a reason it was better. You know, it wasn't, we didn't have the, we had stars from all different walks of life, different parts of the world from, you know, people that were known and people that weren't known, you know, and it showed that you didn't need, if you let people do what they're good at and give them that freedom to expand and not try to control them when people, people work better when they're happier. You know, and I felt like that's what was happening with Lucha. You know, we weren't we we weren't walking on eggshells. 
you know, behind the scenes, you know, to work when we got there, it, it was, everyone was chill, you know, and that you work better that way, you know, um, and it turned out to be a small, a small show that turned out to be a, a, a really cool, impressive thing for the wrestling business. And I'm, I'm happy I was a part of it. You know, there's, it was, a, it was a really fun experience. Yeah, man, no kidding. You look at all the names that came out of Lucha Underground and not only just yeah. that, like, you know, the, the tones and the kind of themes that have been Can't adapted. Beat it. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people. So, so what about you now? Is this, are you fo solely focused on acting, producing, or do you want to get back in the ring, kick some ass? Do you want to go to AEW? Um, I think I, I think there's probably opportunities coming. I've been in talks with some different, um, some different companies and different people, opportunities coming on the wrestling side. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have no problem going back, you know, and expanding even more on the wrestling side as long as I'm able to do what I'm still doing. I got you. You know, okay. and that's really the, which only helps both sides, you know, you know, I can bring in different people, different crowd from to the wrestling side, who knows, who maybe like me in this film or this television show, and then they didn't know about, you know, the wrestling side. So it's cool that kind of combine both of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, it was C's here. So you you said earlier, you're like, okay, well, Dwayne's doing action, so I'm going to do drama. Uh, but this movie is a lot all of action. action. All action, right? <laughs> all do action. Yeah. yeah. So, tell, so tell the fans out there that may not have seen this movie yet, what what is going on here in C's? Why should they go out and check this movie out? Um, For anybody in the, you know, out there who likes uh, action flicks, you know, Scott At Atkins is one of the top action stars out there. You know, he's wonderful. He was great to work with. We shot C's in Mexico. Uh, it was really dope to be out there and uh, right on the ocean. It was yeah. pretty relaxing, you know, but beautiful. It, everything, um, everything was moving very quickly uh, during filming C's. Uh, I was able to work with um, Mario Van Peoples, you know, who's a legend in, in uh, Hollywood. He's been around forever. He's an amazing actor. He was great to work with. Yeah. Um, got that voice, that voice. I'm just like, oh, I feel it under my skin. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He did. He did a great job. And I, I thought our chemistry was very good together, too. So we I really enjoyed um, uh, that. And I learned a lot um, on that set just on the action that was my first like heavy action film you know so sure. it, it was cool and it was cool to do i performed all my own stunts along as everyone else did so it was cool to kind of get back into that um i don't think it, it, it didn't feel difficult for me probably because of the wrestling background i i, I think it's fun you know and i yeah. really i had a really dope fight scene in there i'm glad that they kept it um we did that fight scene maybe like I don't know, maybe like 40 times. Yeah. It was, oh, it was okay. intense. I broke, I broke some heels. I broke some, some, uh, one of my outfits ripped. Like I, it was, we were really going at it there for a minute. <laughs> yeah. So which is, so, which is more taxing putting together a fight for a movie or putting together a pro wrestling match? Which one's more taxing? It's a good question. Yeah. Um, see when you're putting together, like when you're in the ring, when you're doing it, that's a different story, right? But when you're putting it together, as you get better and better, and years go on in the rest in the wrestling business, it become it's a it's a mental vision, right? We become we become better and easier putting it together. When you're in the ring and the and your adrenaline's going and the physicality's really happening, it's uh you you're exhausted afterwards. Now when you're doing it on set and you have to do it 40 times over it'd be like doing that match 40 times over yeah that that's exhausting in a totally different way yeah that's why i asked i i've, I've talked to a couple of the people from the glow series and yeah listen, you're like ugh, i'm like sounds brutal again and again yeah. at least in the in wrestling you, you guys put it together and you do it and you're done you know like if you if you messed up you messed up take it do it fix it next you know Make sure you learn from those mistakes, but the adrenaline exhausts you after a wrestling match. But in in a case like this, you're doing it 40 times over, so you're like, oh my god, man, <laughs> I don't think I can kick again. You know, like you're, <laughs> I can't lift my leg. Sure. Um, so it can be definitely exhausting, and that's uh, but it, it's it's fun. It is. It is a lot of fun, and it's cool to see afterwards. 
you know, what you make. Yeah. So I, I definitely enjoyed that. Uh, now that it's out and I got to see it, how, you know, how they put it together, how the director saw it. And it's, it's pretty dope. Yeah, so on that, so tell fans, where can they go find uh, C's right now? Where do you want to send them to go find uh, You guys can watch these on Amazon, iTunes. Um, there was a... I think Amazon and iTunes are now probably the most popular ones, but I think they're, oh, Redbox. That was another one as well. Okay. Yeah. Amazon, I know is easy. That was the way I found it was there. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So Amazon would probably be the easiest. Cool. And where do you want to send people to find you, follow you, support you, all those great things, Carly? You guys can keep in touch with me at Carly Leilani on Instagram and Twitter. I will keep you updated on um, these upcoming projects. Uh, that are going to be coming out in the next six months. I'm super excited and pumped about it. And you'll be able to keep updated uh, with myself on the wrestling side of things and to where I may be headed and where you could see me in the wrestling ring coming up.